Our mission for coordinated target acquisition and ground strike is used as a means to develop seamless communications across multiple UAVs, and it consists of two main parts. The first part utilizes the rotoring aircraft to fly across the flight area and scan it to search for targets via computer vision from its onboard camera. Once the target is found, it will then translate the pixel location into the ground coordinates to acquire the location of the target, which will then be acquired by the ground control station to be sent to the fixed wing aircraft. The second part utilizes our fixed wing aircraft, using the target coordinates transmitted by the ground station and using our own algorithm, determine a set of waypoints based on the flight area and target location. It will then autonomously launch, fly, and drop the payload towards the determined ground target. To kick off the mission, we deploy Mantau, our rotary wing UAV, to a carefully predefined location and altitude. This strategic positioning ensures that we achieve comprehensive camera coverage of the entire flight area, allowing it to detect any targets on the ground. Mantau will then continue and hover at this location and scan the whole area for cars, which are used for ground targets in this mission. Here, Mantau's camera has locked onto a car in the flight area. The process video done on the ground station is currently acquiring the target's location based on the camera feed and also Mantau's current location. The ground control station has now obtained the given coordinates by the rotary wing aircraft's camera and delivers it to Chandramaya, the fixed wing aircraft, generating its own set of waypoints to deliver the payload to the target. Chandramaya is now taking off automatically and guided by its given waypoints to deliver its target. Given the range of the flight area, the coordinates are designed to ensure clear and straight payload dropping trajectory and requires the aircraft to turn around and drop the payload from the other direction. The payload has now been dropped and both the fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft return to land simultaneously. And here both our aircrafts have landed. And here's another look to our mission scenario. Here our rotary wing aircraft has taken off automatically and now traversing to a predetermined spot. The camera feed on the bottom right corner is transmitted and processed to the ground control station, which will search for targets in the flight area. We can see that the target has been found by the rotary wing aircraft, and the target is obtained by the ground control station which can be seen on the pop-up notification on the bottom left corner. Then we switch to the fixed wing ground control station, which automatically generates a set of waypoints to deliver the payload to the target. And now the fixed wing aircraft is taking off automatically following its given waypoints to deliver the payload to the target. Speed 
Jangan ke belakang ya. Speed, 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 speed 15, speed 15, speed 15, speed 17, speed 17, speed 17, speed 17, speed 17, speed 17, 12, 13, 13, masih 13, 13, 12, 11, 10, 10, 8, 6, 4, 1, oke, okay. nice, kurang. Hello, my name is Alex. I'm a third-year aerospace engineering student and currently the team captain and secondary pilot of Aksantara Itebu. Our team consists of students in multiple departments with different backgrounds, all with experiences in the Indonesian National Flying Robot Competition. Hello, my name is Akelio. I'm a third-year student of aerospace engineering and I'm in this team. I'm in charge of aerodynamics design. Hello, my name is Nathan. I'm a third-year mechanical engineering student and I'm from the mechanical design department. My name is Naim from third year electrical engineering student. I'm from avionics and hardware control department. Hi, I'm Jazil. I'm a third year electrical engineering student. I'm a part of avionics hardware control department. My name is Nafa. I'm a third year of electrical engineering student. I'm a part of avionics hardware control department. My name is Mohamad Timo Sakti Winter I'm a third year computer science student at Institute of Technology Bandung. I'm from the robotics software control department. I'm Hilmi Baskara Radanto. I'm a third year information system and technology student from Robotic Software Control Department. Hello, my name is Ali Zanala. I'm responsible for vertical takeoff landing manufacturing. Hello, my name is Dimas Yogesawa Putra. I am responsible for the fixed wing manufacturing process. Hello, my name is Andrian. I'm a third year mechanical engineering student. I'm the team manager. Hello, my name is Muhammad Abernahia. I'm a second year aerospace engineering student and I'm from Creative Department Aksantara. In this mission video, we will be using an improved design compared to the previous one. For our wing configuration, we will still stick with a forward swept wing for better maneuverability at lower speed. However, we opt with a conventional tail for better stability. The calculation using machine chart to fulfill the DRO is attached below. The latest revision of the UEFI has higher tail arm length to increase the pitch authority. The UEFI aerodynamics performance for the improved configuration are obtained using explore analysis, such as the three basic aerodynamic coefficient, aerodynamics efficiency, and aerodynamics endurance. To further prove the stability of the UEFI, we conduct a dynamic stability analysis using explore, where the results show from the load locus that all modes aside from the spiral modes are stable. Nevertheless, the UEFI can be deemed to be stable. We also perform the analysis on two payload carry cases, the maximum and the minimum. Last but not least, by constructing the fan diagram using related flight performance equation to better understand the UAV, the turning performance of the UAV can be obtained, especially at the corner velocity, where the turn is the most aggressive. The airframe, wings, and tails of Chindramaya are primarily constructed from puzzled plywood reinforced with two 12mm carbon fiber tubes on the wings. This design ensures a lightweight structure while maintaining a good structural integrity to withstand various static and dynamic loads caused by aerodynamic forces during flight. Our rotary wing vehicle is newly developed by our team. First, we do the conceptual design based on the mission we define. We chose a quadcopter configuration because of its simplicity and suitability with the mission we do. For the frame, we designed an octagonal shaped frame that is suitable for all the components used and can withstand the loads from the propulsion and operation of the vehicle. We have conducted several flight tests and our rotary wing UAV can complete the mission. Initially, our rotary wing vehicle is using a 4S propulsion system. Along the way, we found a more efficient propulsion system. Therefore, we decided to change to a 6S propulsion system. In the current configuration of our UAV, it will have a flight time of around 12 minutes. In the previous configuration, it will have a flight time of around 9 minutes. As seen in the graph, the new configuration needs less current to achieve the same amount of thrust when compared to the previous configuration. We use our campus's innovation center as our working space. Facilities include CNC routers, laser cutting machines, and 3D printers, as well as sufficient workbenches that we use to develop our UAVs. The production and manufacturing processes are carried out in the FMAE production lab. In the production of our fixed wing UAV, we mainly use 3mm plywood as our material. Laser cutting method is used to transfer the design created onto the plywood. The finished parts will then be assembled using ethyl cyanoacrylate glue. The part designs feature holes for weight reduction as well as puzzling for ease of assembly. 
the leading edge, trailing edge, and control surface of the wing are manufactured using 3D printing made using PETG filament. This filament choice is based on material property analysis and testing between different filament materials. The assembled plywood is then laminated using monocoat to ensure optimal aerodynamic performance for the UAV with the exception of the nose section which is laminated using fiberglass and lycal resin for extra protection. The lifting devices are attached to the fuselage using different combination of nuts and bolts. Two carbon fiber tubes are used in the wing and carbon fiber tubes are also attached between vertical tailplane and horizontal tailplane using 3D printed mount to maintain the rigidity of lifting devices. The payload dropping mechanism is also using plywood and a puzzling method. The payload dropping mechanism is attached to the bottom section of the mid fuselage. The production of our vertical takeoff landing UAV consists of 3D printed parts and assembly using nuts and bolts. The arms and legs of the UAV are made using carbon fiber tubes connected using 3D printed parts made from ABS filament and threaded insert. Finally, the dome is 3D printed using PETG for more heat resistant properties. Our propulsion system includes an original propeller specifically designed for optimal performance at our designated cruising throttle. From our experiments, our design produces a maximum thrust of 2.5 kg and achieves peak efficiency at cruising throttle at 50%. The foldable 1255 inch propeller is 3D printed from carbon fiber reinforced nylon filament and post processes to ensure smooth surfaces. To control our vehicle, the team in Aksanta ITB is developing a fully custom designed flight controller called Antares. The Antares is designed to be a versatile flight controller for use in various UEV applications. In terms of connectivity, Antares offers a large option. It features five connections which can be used to connect receiver, telemetry unit, GPS, airspeed sensors, and other peripherals. It also features one I2C port, one CAN bus, SPI, and micro SD card slot for logging. Antares run the open source firmware Ardu Pilot, giving it huge potential for configuration and customization. In the heart of Antares is an STM32 H743 microcontroller. Antares has a built-in inertial measurement system which combines data from two IMU, one barometer and one magnetometer. The flight controller is powered by an external power module. The core of the system is our on the float flight controller. For the battery, we use on polypop battery with 4 cell, cell, cell and 3000 mAh capacity. For the servo, we use MG90i. For the airspeed sensor, we use Halibur MS airspeed sensor. For the RTO telemetry, we use Halibur SIG RTO. For the GPS, we use HRT that also support ITK. For the ESC, we decided to use our undeveloped ESC with YSL and AT Ampere capacity. And for the motor, we use Sunny Sky motor. The ESC we developed using Type Zoidal Control and have Time Impact. In our Vital UAV system, we use our own developed flight controller as the brain of the system. And then we use a 6S 5000 mAh battery as the power source of the UAV, which directly connected to the 60 amp circuit breaker and T-Motor Velux for in one ESC. The power from ESC is also used to power PWM through UBAC, power the flight controller through power module, and also power the Voxnel Avatar HDVTX V2, which is used as a digital video transmission. We use a Voxnel Avatar camera to detect objects. The Voxnel VTX is also wirelessly connected to a video RX in the ground control station. For navigation and waypoint tracking, we use an M10 GPS which already includes buzzer and safety switch. We also use a Benawick TFO2 LiDAR as an altitude sensor in the system. As for the communication, we use a Holybro 433 MHz V3 radio telemetry that is directly connected to the Telem1 port of the flight controller and wirelessly connected to the telemetry on ground control station. And here's the price breakdown for both our aircrafts. So next, I will explain about our own made website-based ground control station. The main functionality of our own ground control station is to control two drones simultaneously. In this case, we also specifically develop the web to relay information between the drones. For the use case example, let's say the user want to make a mission for the rotary wing to find the target and then the rotary wing start to find it. Once the target coordinate is detected using our AI, the RGCS will get the information and the user will able to generate the waypoint based on the target mission like this and if the waypoint is generated then the user can start the mission for the object we use a 
Yolo V10 model, the newest state of art model from Yolo. So, in order to do the object production, we will send the disk from the drone using a digital video transmitter. And then after that, the GCS, the ground control station, will receive the images and then process it using the model that we have trained before. And then after we sure that this is the, the target is confirmed, we can then press button C on the keyboard and we will send the target coordinate to the GCS so that the fixed wing could launch.